Patreon.com forward slash fighting words. Love the boys, support the boys. And the only way to do that is with your hard earned cash. Give us £2 a month, £3.50 a month, £5 a month, or £10 a month if you're feeling particularly spenny. Your money will literally go into our pockets and buy us things. How about that? Sometimes we make content in return for that money, but no. Uh, Xbrain.co.uk, enter promo code fighting words to save 20% off your order of any and all Xbrain related products. And shout out to our sponsor, Market Squawk, powered by Live Squawk. For all of your on-demand data needs we are joined squawk, by time sake. squawk um, <laughs> guest number one someone that we had to retire from potentially winning guest of the year because now it's known as the russ amber fighting words guest of the year <laughs> russ amber's back how Indeed. are you doing it's we had a near miss a couple of months ago but i'm very very happy to have you back you always know that yeah and uh, i'm happy to be back and at least there's something we can talk about and uh, it's a good thing you got me now because i'm on as of Saturday, I'm on a six-week run, so uh, I don't know mm -hmm. how you'll find me then. But uh, I'll be culminating with being in Manchester, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like obviously, we, we live in London, and, and you know that Manchester doesn't really exist to us because it's <laughs> this it's the south it's the north south divide. It is what it is. I don't really operate outside of London unless it's for a beach. I, I'm going international. <laughs> it's just how it is. It's, it's what it is. He lives in somewhere. I don't even know where he lives. He lives a long way away. I live so far in the sticks that London's a mystery to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but the thing is, it's such a, a tiny country that, yeah, like, why though, you know? it's really easy. You know, like, I mean, you, you, you want to go to Manchester. What What's the train time to Manchester? It's, Oof, it's, the, it's not long, is it? It's like three hours. hours. Yeah, two, yeah, three yeah hours. for you guys, it's something like that now. Yeah. I drive to Toronto for fights, and that's six hours to drive there. And I'm only in Toronto by that point, you know. Like, I did. I did six hours this morning to get to this um, hotel for Davis Cunningham. Start started at four in the morning. Got here for ten a.m. Wow, long so, shift. Uh, as we was explaining before we hit record, Russ, this is Sam the Young Squire. So you've educated us, and Ian and I are not allowed to call ourselves old timers or even middle age. Really, it's um, we don't look middle age. I know that. It's cool. <laughs> but our, our objective with the young squire is obviously to get him to understand that misfits is not boxing. KSI is not a boxer. And, you know, when I send him w what he deems to be old, old fights, Tony Jirov, for example, <laughs> um, Nazim Hamed versus Kevin Kelly, like things that were, were before he was born. It's our objective to let him know that this this is a very old sport and there's a lot to it. And what you're seeing now is equally terrifying and amazing. So there's no one better than that than, than you to also aid in this mission with the squire. Yeah, that's that. that listen, that's another subject you can add to this discussion. You know, we, I know we have a few <laughs> want to talk about, but yeah. the, the old girl that that bared her titties. You know, that's another thing we can talk about and uh i i mean I'll, sh should we just all take a moment and google it and look at it for a bit <laughs> <laughs> and then we could discuss it from a point of educated like like objectiveness now sam's just going to put it on all four squares it's just going to be that clip covered up yeah. on, on the <laughs> <laughs> she was she was celebrating a big win and i i for one say the future is female and i commend it and i'm all about it respect <laughs> Here's the thing. I think that whole are we, we're going to start. I guess we're going to start with that now. Then, right? Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah let's go for it. Let's start with. Let's, the get, Come let's on. get you all fired up before I ask you to in, in, like go for the intricacies and technicalities of wrapping and stacking and all of the other stuff. <laughs> I think you might be surprised at my at my outtake on this, but uh, I'm not, I, I actually know you quite well. I think you're going to say <laughs> I'm fine with it. No, well, no, well, no. I'm 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 not obviously fine with it, but I'm less not fine with it than I am with the fact that you're treating this as real boxing. The real yeah. crime here is that this is being presented with presenters in the ring and TV cameras and, and, a, and a, a beautiful, amazingly expensive setup that you would think it's a, it's a match room or boxer card, you know, that's being mm -hmm. put on. It looks like it's the real thing. That's where the crime is. The crime is that you're presenting this as real boxing. The bearing your titties is the, is the, is the least, of your problems now 
than the fraud you're presenting that this is supposed to be real professional boxing. And the fact that that's allowed to continue is what the real crime is. So if you're going to suspend this girl for doing that, you should be barred for life for presenting this fraudulent oh, yeah. thing that you're trying to pass off as boxing. That's the fraud behind all this. I also find it somewhat hypocritical that, you know, you're all upset because she bared her titties, like it's, as if it's such a, a travesty. Oh, no, you saw a nipple. Oh, my God. Like, wow. But it's okay to wear dental floss to the weigh-in, you know, and bare your ass to everybody, and that's okay. And it's okay to wear your only fans a shirt, you know, and and be and every girl has on OnlyFans and wants you to go and subscribe to then pay to see their titties, you know. So, like, I I I think it's a little bit hypocritical that you're doing that, you know. That that bothers me more than anything else. You're either going to let them do what it is that they do, or you're going to mm -hmm. stop it all together. But don't be, you know, the oh no, she she did it on the on the feed. So what? People. It was swear the free subscription trial. That's what she did. You know. There you go. It was a taster. <laughs> Taste so, was the objective I tell you word. the problem is like you were saying, right? It's that I heard about this on the boxing pages. Like the first I saw it popped up on like boxing pages. It's like, why the fuck is this on boxing things? Normally there's a whole separate set of sites for the titties, yeah. but <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. fucking we on heard all the about boxing this pages. from you and because you and whenever, whenever a pair of breasts is exposed anywhere anywhere in the uk he is alerted somehow and he immediately <laughs> he immediately has the social media and sends it into the group <laughs> shout out you and please take your diabetes yeah. so anyways that's what my feeling is i just thought you know you're coming after this girl as if you're making it bigger than it should be she flashed her breast like no <gasps> we've never seen one before oh my god how terrible please stop why is that worse than ask you can't a woman can't even go into a bathing suit store now and buy a bathing suit that doesn't completely expose her entire ass. So ass has become... God bless. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. God bless. But ass... But no, breast cannot. They're wearing the skimpiest of tops, which barely cover the nipple. Oh, if you don't cover the nipple, it's okay. Okay. Now how hypocritical are we getting, really? Like, it's yeah. a little bit ignorant, if you ask. If you wouldn't make such a big deal about it, it wouldn't be a big deal. No one cares. It's okay. It's just a pair of boobs. Who cares? No one cares. A Be anyway. more mad at the real thing, which is the fraudulent presentation that these people are boxers and they have a license to be professional boxers and they can post on their social media that I'm a professional boxer. I mean, like, so this would probably be a good time to, to ask your opinion on the game changer that is tag team boxing. Yes or yes? The what? Do you not know they do tag team boxing? It's insane. Oh, I think I did hear some stupidity about that. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. It's insane. Not only does it not work, it's 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 amazing. Like you just like what this is the end of Rome. We're in the middle of the end. Anyway, um let's flip into what I really want to talk to you about. And you are you you're the only person to go to for this, in my opinion. Okay. Run run us through broad strokes, the intricacies of your craft which is obviously rapping like because a lot of people don't realize how technical it is how intricate it is how many rules there are to do with it and and how different the rules are per territory and then obviously we'll flow into the fault and in your way complaints and stacking and what that is etc so russ the floor is yours i'm not sure where where i should begin with this um yes you're right there are, you know, uh, bad hand wrappers, good hand wrappers, better hand wrappers, great hand wrappers. There's all, I guess, like in any walk yeah. of life, in anything you do, you, there's great cornermen, there's bad cornermen. Yes. There's a way to dress in the corner, not, you know, how to handle yourself yeah. in the corner, the things to say, what not to say. I think that applies. Right, well, to look, well, look, 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 for, for, for perspective, to, to, to let anyone who God knows if they listen to us and they don't know who you are, I have no idea what they've been doing. You would be responsible for Lomachenko's hands, Usek's hands, Better BF's hands, uh, Beefy's hands, Callum Smith's hands. Like the list goes on and on and on. So, you know, not I would, bad. It's not bad. You clearly, <laughs> you clearly know what you're doing. List. Yeah, you clearly know what you're doing. So it's nice I would, to hear it come from somebody else. That's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, it, 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 there's a, there's a lot of money at stake end. if those hands get injured. So yeah. that's when. 
that's when you know that the skills pay the bills, right? Because you put some chump who don't know what they're doing, you got some broken hands, you got some problems. So, okay. so carry on, Rob. Well, I mean, I can compliment you some more, but I think <laughs> no, 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 that's enough. Uh... <laughs> Enough for one for for at least this portion of the episode. Yeah, no, be a little bit more. Don't worry. You know, you you get paid in kindness. Um, so yeah, there's good, bad, and 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 great in in, in anything. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll sum it up this way. I got a call from both the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the California State Athletic Commission. They both asked me what did I think about stacking. Okay. Aside from the fact that I have my personal opinion on this. And stacking would be what? I'm sorry? Stacking would be what? You want me to describe stacking? Yeah, because, for example, like without pointing fingers at Sam, I don't think Sam knows what stacking is. Okay. Uh, what they call stacking now is where you would do a layer of gauze. Yep. Now it's even become a layer of tape first. Yep. Uh, then gauze, then mm-hmm. more tape, then more mm-hmm. gauze, then more tape to however many you want to put on. Essentially creating a cost. I don't know what you're creating, but that's really not <laughs> the point. I'll tell you why it's not the point. Because from an ad- administrative perspective, as a, as a commission, as an athletic commission, as a governing body, the idea is that the rule should be clear, simple, concise and equal to everybody Mm -hmm. so that was my response when california and nevada asked me this question i said guys look the more complicated you make rules the more people will try to abuse and Mm -hmm. find loopholes in those rules and use those very rules that you're imposing to cheat yeah well complication always leads to ambiguity doesn't it correct I said, for me, it should be gauze, tape, magic marker. That's it. It's a three simple rule process. You're allowed to use gauze. When you're finished, you put tape. When you finish, you put magic marker on it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Tape stops at the top of the knuckles. No tape on the hitting surface. You can't twist anything. Good to go. Like, it's a simple, simple... Here are the tools you're allowed to use. This is the order in which you're allowed to use them. You cannot deviate from that. The stacking, whether it's justifiable or not, whether there's any scientific proof that it does increase punching power, I don't know. I can only respond from personal opinion on this. Mm -hmm. But what it is, is that if you're doing it, and the fighter wants it done, you feel you're gaining some kind of an advantage. Mm. And that, to me, is tantamount to cheating because now you're trying to do something above and beyond with the tool, with the material they give you. You're trying to figure out a way to do it, to make it that much harder, that much stiffer. But I think what people forget is you're making it that much heavier. Yeah, And mm-hmm. by doing so, you're putting a mass weight at the end of your hand. And that mass weight creates velocity. Now, you can do this test on your own and put a a, a weight around your wrist and hit a bag and hit it without it. You're going to see that velocity. When you start letting that punch go, it'll slow down your speed a little bit, but the mass impact will be greater. Mm. As a fight goes on and that starts to get wet, which of course it does because water is dripping in all the way from your arms, not to mention the heat that's generated in your hands. That's sweating. That's getting wet. Water is heavy. It increases the weight of the hand wrap. So you're, you likely might be hitting a guy with, you know, a a pound of weight, you know, in, in, in your hand plus the glove. Yep. So to me, that's just finding a way to try and cheat. And whenever people try to contour the rules and yeah, oh no, but we're allowed. Okay, but if two guys agree to fight in brass knuckles, you wouldn't let them do that. No. But you can't just say, well, if they agree to it, oh, that's a-. no, that's not that's not reason enough. Next and up on Misfits. Guys- I'm sorry? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> next next up on the Misfits card. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll go glue and glass. <laughs> no. 
It, it can't. It, it can't be that you you want to do this and uh, and tell me that it's okay and it's legal to do this. I just don't buy into that. I'm sorry. It's just something that goes yeah. against my my values as a trainer, my values as a guy in boxing. And to say that it must be okay because athletic commissions allow it. Yeah. Listen, that is the most hypocritical statement you could possibly make because the same athletic commissions which don't allow boxing to use a detached thumb you know it has to be an attached thumb is the same commission which allows fingerless gloves you know and then you can yeah. you can poke a guy so don't i don't want to hear about that mm -hmm. they're the same commission who tells you you can only use adrenaline let's say for for cuts but adrenaline is only available to you by by prescription only so you can't even buy it but that's the only thing you're allowed to use. You can use it, but technically you can't really yeah. buy it. You have yeah. to have a contact. It becomes an underground thing that you make up. You know, you you know a guy who knows a doctor who gets a prescription for you to use it for that purpose. That, that, like that's insane. If yeah. anything, the athletic commission should be giving you a prescription when you get your license, so you can go get it filled and. And 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 get or they should be doing like what they do in the in the UK and providing it to you. Yeah, but you can't turn around and ask you to only use a product that you can't procure. Yeah, that opens the, the window to some dodgy shit being ringside. Tijuana, yeah. as you go straight over the border, right? You're just going to go and get it elsewhere and come back with it and hope for the best. What a bottle in California is a th that this was this was. Pre-pandemic, you know what a bottle of adrenaline is in California? It's like two hundred and fifty dollars. And in the state of New York, if that bottle has been opened, you can't use it. So if you go into a fight, if you're in the main event, and your bottle has already been opened, you can't use that bottle. Because you could have opened it and maybe used it once. Can't use it anymore. Can I get another one? No. no. I mean, so it's pointless. don't talk to me about the hypocrisy of commissions and they allow you to do this and allow you to do that. And and I know for a fact that, you know, the the the, the California went along with my suggestion of saying no stacking. Nevada yeah. did not. But conveniently, it did not. And that's where Canelo likes to fight, you know, mm -hmm. and Canelo likes to stack. And Abel Sanchez, you know, raised that point numerous times in the Golovkin era. Yeah, yeah. Fight. Yeah, you know, and uh, they said no. You're allowed. You're allowed to do it. So, and then you have other commissions who turn around and say, "You're allowed to put two strips of tape on the back of your hand." Why? Well, you guys sat around the boardroom, yeah. ten guys, and said, "What should we allow?" Joe says, "I think we should allow two strips on the back of the hand." Frank says, hey, you know what? That's a good idea, Joe. I, I like that. I'll vote in favor. Favor. Why? Well, where did this even come from that you think that two pieces of tape on the back of your hand is should be a rule? I don't even see what value that adds. It is zero. <laughs> zero. It adds zero value. That's insane. Now, Russ, do you think that maybe... We, I mean, there's there's been ever increasing bizarre decisions judges that now are they don't seem to be held accountable anywhere across the board like we were chatting to someone the other night you know there was a dude on his, a judge on his phone yeah you know not that long ago in the uk you know we've seen some pretty shocking decisions in the There's uk been some lately rogue school cards. there really has been some rogue ones i mean where you do guys you think are this trying goes? to take over where Germany left off. That's what that's this is, yeah, it, yeah. right? Yeah. This is the problem. Like you <laughs> used to have, you used to have to maybe get a knockout ish in Germany, and you might get a draw if you're lucky. Like they were awful, or disqualified, or disqualified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but like, not just here, but like the the sport is diminishing in North America. That I think we can all agree on that. Like, there's a few superstars. It is diminishing. All you got to do is look at like the ESPN panel of analysts that they have now. They've cut. It, uh, Max Kellerman got cut. You know what I mean? Like, who who out there was more of like the next Jim Lampley than Max Kellerman? Like, he, he where does he go now? He was great. Like, you know, here it's thriving. 
but because it's thriving we have a lot of uh suspect issues should we say yeah it's uh i don't know i i i find it i find it um troubling and i remember being right there in saudi when a group of journalists uh i guess you could say cornered or approached the ref the judge who gave the fight to anthony joshua and mm -hmm. you know he they asked him how did you score it you know how could you score the fight like that and mm -hmm. uh, he said oh i can't answer that you'll have to defer to my supervisor and uh i thought okay. Wow, you know, like yeah. you, you don't even have the the balls to, you know, just to, to validate what you did, your work. You're deferring to your supervisor. Your supervisor didn't score the fight, and for all for all we know, he could be thinking the same damn thing. He could be saying, "How the heck did you give that to him?" And the fact that they're not held accountable, or at least that they have to explain their card, I think is wrong. You know, I think if yeah. you're doing the job. You have to be able to say, I did it for this reason, and I scored it like this, and I, I did this. I thought he won because of this, 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 and justify at least what you did. The fact that you can do it without justification and virtually no repercussion either, like there's absolutely yeah. no repercussions whatsoever, um, it makes you wonder, you know, what could it's be done because th these fucks could even monetize it like you think how many watch along videos there are on youtube of people who don't know what the fuck they're talking about there should be a channel where the judge has to watch thousand. along and say exactly why the fuck he chose like that should be the bare minimum you've got people's careers and lives at yeah. stake the yeah. least you should be able to do is back up your decision round by round yeah well, Put right, it on the you're for the first time on saturday so we do live sto scoring on our on our streams now Okay, so we score live as the at the end of the round between however many of us are on the stream, we have a very open discussion and it's, you know, we decide who wins that round. Mm -hmm. But that's us. We're not paid to do it. And but there is an explanation and there is reason to and it. We're and we're drinking not, on the job. And we're <laughs> normally absolutely and utterly wasted while it happens. And <laughs> the scores are normally in line with what they should be, surprisingly, when you watch it back. Right? Mm we're not professionals these people I don't are think there's such a thing as a professional yeah. uh, judge other than the yeah. fact that he watches they a fight and they pay him for it you know like their 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 discrepancy and interpretation of the rules is not even close to what a trainer looks for in the gym when he's mm -hmm. training a fighter on how he thinks a fighter should win a round and what the subtleties are of a great boxer and what what should be rewarded you know like uh, it's so basic and 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 the fact that you know, you're, they're so against, you know, it's almost like a crime. You're, it's taboo. Should you score an even round? You know, mm. like, oh, no, you got to give it to somebody. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? If, it's, if it's an even round, it's an even round. And then, of that course, the other extreme where everyone then just sits on the fence and scores, you know, eight rounds even. You know, well, okay, that's a little, that's a little stupid as well. So there's always these extremes that, that happen. And it's because of human Stupidity. error, uh, not error, human influence. Yeah, uh, you know, human frailty that make that, that makes makes that happen. So it's I always just, a one seventeen, one ten. It's like you you filled out the card before the fight even started because sometimes the round is so clear. Like sometimes they barely land a fucking punch and they give them the and it's like. What were you watching? Like sometimes they barely throw a punch as well. You know, sometimes a punch is barely thrown, and you score a 10-9 round where nothing has happened, and it's the same score as a round that could be round of the year. Yeah. You know, and it's a 10-9 round. You know what I mean? Like it's insane. Uh I I just I just don't get it. I don't understand why they want to do that. And and the greatest, the greatest one of all, and the proof that draws exist in rounds is the famous, that was close. It could yeah. have gone either way. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Then it's a draw. It's really that simple. <laughs> that's exactly what that means. That's yeah. exactly, it's not it could have gone either way. It means it was even. That's yeah, what yeah. it means. What do you mean it could have gone either way? Oh, well, do, you he know how, do, do you know how we handled that oh, on a stream? We hit both buttons and say that was an even round. I don't, th th but this, this is it. This is what I don't, 
like as someone that's been in the game 40 what 48 years 44 years 40, 44 years maybe 45 you know, coming up this year yeah coming up 45 um yeah does this get fixed or do we just all get older a little bit more bitter just accept it a little bit more and then before we know it sam's beard ish thing is gray and he's having the same conversation the circle I of life have, as it were i don't have any hope that they're going to do anything about it uh and they can i think it's i think it's insane that two people's livelihoods are exactly. on the line for potentially millions of dollars case in point devin haney and lomachenko yep. and we're relying on three often very past senior citizen age yes, they are. and they're 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 determining what the whole world has to believe is right yeah on the, in, hey in, if one of them can run a country they can run boxing well you, you got a point <laughs> um, um, and, and, and the key when they're they're looking like this which means they can't see properly because the ropes are in the way so yeah, you know well, i mean like get a monitor it's very simple. They did this in the UFC. Give them a monitor. Give them a monitor and give them X fighters, like people who know what the fuck they're looking at. X trainers, X fight. Like get them someone who is not just someone that did a course or just like goes to the fights. Like someone who knows what they're doing. That's lived the sport. Make them accountable. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, but like we're we're talking about the millions of dollars for the people in the ring. We got to admit, a big part of it might be there's even more millions at stake outside the ring, and that's why they don't want to fix it. Maybe, right. maybe that's a good point. That's a good point. You have a very good point there. I just, I mean, if you're in in a perfect utopic world, you know, I would think that you have three judges, then you have, you know, an eight judge panel. You know, that's scoring this. Like there should be a larger consensus of people scoring this. You know, I mean, I I'm almost inclined to trust the media more sure. scoring yeah. a fight than I. I'm also can I'm also prefer when former fighters or trainers score fights yep. Yep. way more than anybody else because they know exactly what to look for. And in all those cases, they have Loma beating Haney and they had uh, they had the Lopez fight, you know, at, at, at worst, a draw. Draw, yeah. You know, so, uh, and those were fighters because they know what's going on. They see what's happening. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I trust their opinion more than anybody else and we don't use them instead we take people that are completely never have never been in the gym are not in the gym don't understand what it is to train a fighter don't understand the subtleties i think i've made this point to you guys i'm not sure if i made you but i know it's it's i've done this before i always used juan manuel marquez as mm -hmm. as an example for this in that i've always said he was too good for the yep. people judging him yes yeah 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 you know, sure. and they don't understand the subtleties of him standing there and blocking a punch literally this far from his face. Mm -hmm. And they think the punch lands, you know, and, that, and and doing certain moves, which has completely nullified and neutralized the opponent to make him his attack ineffective. They don't see it. They just don't have the knowledge or the wherewithal to understand that 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 skill set in the ring. They just don't get it. Fighters do. Yeah. Yeah. They do. I mean, like, you know, Andre Ward, exquisite. He's never wrong. You know, Tim Bradley gets a little bit dramatic. Jamel Herring has been smashing it, to be fair. Chris Algieri, yeah. like, these I fighters... I feel like Bradley are... sometimes gets a bit of shade if there's anyone in his weight division. He almost gets yeah. his back up and just, if they're the new thing, he just wants them to not yeah. be a new shit on them, like, irrespectively. Yeah. 100%. Like, right. You are also a good fighter. <laughs> yeah, but now we, we you're all love you. You're, like you're in the Hall of Fame. Title. Relax, <laughs> yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, with Loma Haney, have you... Are you at any sort of peace with it? Because look, look, full disclosure, full disclosure. I've watched that fight five times, maybe six. Loma won. Like, and even, even if you watch highlights presented by top rank by anyone, the highlights are all Loma. Like, it's just insane. I, I don't think I'll ever make peace with it. And I think it's probably... I'm going to look back on this as the time in my life, and it probably happened at a at an age in my life where I've just lost faith in the sport and lost faith in that we want to make it better, and that you know uh, it, it comes on the heels of misfits and 
what are they called? Kingpin? What's the other one Kingpin, called? Yeah. yeah. The social me- influencers and porn stars boxing and stuff. I've just come to the point where, you know, now it just doesn't matter anymore. You know, all every fight is just a payday and it's not about the sport. And mm. perfect example of that is Tyson Fury. You know, like you have a yes. chance to unify the heavyweight championship of the world. You know, you bring your one belt and your your fans, you know, you're all oh, my fans and I'm the A side and I'm the draw. And you want to, you know, you 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 challenge Usyk and and give him no money, and he accepts, and you still don't want to fight, and now you're going to fight a guy in Saudi Arabia. You probably didn't think two shits about Saudi Arabia five years ago. You didn't nope. care about Arabs or anything. It didn't matter. But that was a place for you to go and hide and make some money. Now fighting a guy who's never had a professional contest in his life, and we're allowing it to happen. So. I'm going the problem back is the problem is it will cool. sell. That's that's the tragedy of it. It will sell. You're gonna get the MMA. I don't know if it'll there. do as big a numbers as they're expecting. No, they always not. use Connor and Floyd as like the blueprint, and it's like, listen, they're different. You, like in their fields, Fury, yes, and Ngannou, yes, but them together in a boxing match, it's not the same. I think Ian, I I agree with you, and it shouldn't be, you know, and and people. No, after watching McGregor and and Floyd, that he carried him, you know, like he, <laughs> you know, he did that. And if he didn't carry him, well, sometimes it's not hard to go the distance, you know, when you when the other guy doesn't want to blast you out. But yeah. I think we've reached the point where boxing has become the sideshow freak at the circus, you know, like it doesn't matter that the real fighters are fighting, you know, when you get two crazy people from other domains. Mm-hmm. that have decided to settle a score in the ring, like Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, or, you know, Eddie supposed to like, like it's, this is what boxing is be- has become. It's become, you know, the bearded lady at the circus. And uh, I just, it, it just doesn't carry. We were talking about this the other night, went out with some friends. There was a, a and one of the gentlemen was, was in his eighties. And he said, there was a time, you know, you knew who the heavyweight champion of the world was. And when he came along, he was one of the most revered people on the planet, you know, for political it reasons. It wasn't and, that long ago. And no. Lennox and, was probably the last one. But like, everyone knew Lennox. Maybe maybe the, maybe the Tyson. Yeah, and the, the clips goes Clitch. to a lesser extent though, because they were like the big white boring dudes. It wasn't it wasn't a positive thing. Like, you know, go on. No, you did. I disagree. It's just that it didn't happen as much in the Western world, you see. Fair, but where fair, they fair. were from, they were big heroes. You know what I mean? So population wise, they yeah, they right. commanded the respect. You know what I mean? We just didn't like them because they weren't. You know, they weren't from the West. The American, they weren't American. They weren't British. You know, mm. so we frown on somebody you know who's not from either of those two shores who might be actually good at something. You know, Do, can you imagine? If Inoue oh. was an American fighter, oh my God. do you realize his trainer, which is his dad, would mm-hmm. be the most sought after trainer? Oh, yep. he's the trainer of the year. He's great. No one gives two flying yep. mm. four letter word about his trainer. They don't <laughs> care. They look at Inoue, but they, but if it would have been an American trainer, oh my God. You know, like this guy would be already be handing the trainer of the year award he'd already the fighters would be going to his camp and the same like what happened with uh reynoso you yeah. know like all of a sudden people start going to him because he has canelo and now derek james is the one now isn't he he's yeah. the he's he's the, well, the sad thing him. even even in a way, if he spoke english it would be like so much bigger news and that's terrible it's like yeah look at him, what he does in the ring that's what you fucking that's what it's about yeah, I, 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 I think, I think, um, yeah, the English thing for sure is important, but we get, we get upset because they're not from here. But in Japan, he's mm. a bigger star than maybe some of our bigger stars in the West. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So are we jealous yeah. about that? Maybe you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's always going to be in any sport you're going to like your hometown guy, you like your hometown team, you know, you like. Mm-hmm. You no, know, that there's always going to be that. And, uh, you know, I mean, to think about, like, if we look here, you know, Jean Pascal was fighting here and 
you know, Hopkins had to come here and fight him twice. Chad yeah. Dawson had to come here and fight him. You know, I mean, these guys had to come because they couldn't make that kind of money elsewhere yeah. because Jean was the draw. They were English, they were American, but they weren't have that je ne sais pas quoi, you know. Je ne sais quoi it's quoi it's quoi like um, Usyk's been on the road for... Ever. Like, yeah, like Watch. all of his big fights have been on the road. Like this is the closest he's got to a hometown fight, isn't it? The one coming yeah. up. Yeah, and always on the road. You know, a real champion, yeah. a real, yeah. a real ch world champion. Your know, fight has fought everywhere on all the continents. You know, and look, I, I, that's why I think I'm just a little disappointed now in what going what what's going on and the mockery that we've made of it and the the sanctioning bodies that are just happy to take money from whatever. You have mandatory challengers. You have yep. interim champions. You have silver champions. How can you have all that? With global belts, global champions, yeah, <laughs> and contenders. So, you know, How like can you have a world champion and a global champion? It may, it's just like, sure, there's aliens now. So a there are aliens now. That's true. That's we've, we've been over that. <laughs> I mean, soon they're going to have the flat Earth champion. You have the global one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Intergalactic. Yeah, it's uh, so. I've lost a little hope, gentlemen, in uh, in 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 the fighters, and you know when I think about. You know, now we're on the eve of Spence and Crawford, and I think about, uh, you know, eighty-one and going back to, you know, Leonard and um, uh, Leonard and Hearns. You know, there's a hell of a difference. You know, on how him this was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You yep. understand? And this is this was on major television broadcasts on the news. Like yep. that's how important this was. This fight is huge between two big stars. No problem. But only for us people who yeah. follow boxing. It has absolutely zero impact for people who follow football, hockey, baseball, whatever. You know, it has zero impact unless you happen to be a fan of the sport. But Leonard Leonard Hearns transcended that. This was for all the marbles. This was the two best fighters in the world. And everybody recognized that. That doesn't it's happen. Not, it, it doesn't. It doesn't happen anymore, and the only way that you get it, that, it, 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 the only way we even come close to it, is if it's heavyweights and if it's AJ Fury. If you get something like that level of double fame, double huge guys, like then maybe you get something where you get so many casuals. Because the last one that I remember casuals really, really paying attention to, because I remember it was disgusting. You had people coming up and talking at you that Connor was going to beat Floyd, and you're just like, well, "What are you talking about? Like, leave me alone." Who well, it's you? the whole fake it till you make it has become an actual thing, and now people can't tell the fucking difference. Yeah, like yeah. people are into boxing that don't really, and I hate to f sound fucking high and mighty about it, but really, like they're following shit that's not boxing, so yeah. they can't tell elite level Spence, you know compared to fuck oh, i don't know these cunts name but you know one of the fucking <laughs> misfits people like they've all got these Dean weird the great. names salt there you go. Pappy. Oh, to be fair that Dean the great actually has some boxing Dean the great skill. can fight and so can yeah. salt Pappy. yeah but he can't fine. backflip they, they... though well who can yeah but, <laughs> do you know what i mean so then the then that's where the like you do lose rightfully like faith because you're like where how do we fix this if people don't even know it's broke they're watching shit that that it's not what they think it is and then you're looking past these people like people should realize how big this fight this weekend is it's such a treat and it's amazing but as box fair, it's like incredible but like you said people just man cool all right another fight yeah and, and they'll, they'll, they'll read it on bbc news they'll be like jake Monday paul is fighting the uh, fucking diaz soon Woo! The, the fact that somebody like jake paul and tommy fury cashed in the paycheck that they cashed is is criminal really you know it's it's almost criminal that that could happen and that it could happen where that many people would watch it thinking that that was the real product and i i don't i don't i mean you know you say okay more people like, hey more power to them they could make the money okay great but there's something wrong with that i'll mm. give you another better yeah. example let's let's not talk boxing i saw okay. this yet so two movies have now been released i don't know if it's been the same in the uk but here i'll be an oppenheimer yeah yeah yeah. Barbie has outsold Oppenheimer by double. Yeah, it's not. So those are the two options you have. A doll that you're making a movie about, which is just insane. Yeah. You have the true story of the man who invented 
who split the atom and made the atomic bomb and had an influence on the world that lasts till this day. And you're going to yeah, go, one what? of them's got Margot Robbie. <laughs> I was going to so. just say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The other one, the other one, like, yeah, I know Oppenheimer loved a bit of puss. I know he was crushing. That dude was clapping cheeks and splitting atoms. Respect. <laughs> but, but Margot, you know? Yeah, there you go. So that's, 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 that's where we are in this world. But we're all mad because this poor girl, this porn star girl decided to box and flash her titties. And now they ban her for this. Please. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's her, her profile. I think if anything, she's I'll had a bump. I think if anything, yeah. Yeah, it's had a bump. Oh, well, well, that really, says it all. But that's not the point. That's it. It hasn't hurt her profile. It's made it better for her. And you're trying to come off as being more Catholic than the Pope by 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 banning yeah. her. And you're allowing this presentation of fraud to carry on as real boxing. That's You're perpetrating this, this fraud. Stop, 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 stop. But you've got quite the run coming up over the next six weeks. Well, yeah. Man. Hit me. Go. So I leave for training camp on Saturday. I'll yep. be in training camp with Usyk for, for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Then I fly back for fight week here of Better BF and, and, and Callum Smith, which, as you know, I'm not going to be working nope. either corner on that night. Uh, but I do have some guys on the undercard that I'll be – working with so and maybe doing some tv stuff i'm not sure if they're going to use me as a pundit on will it will it feel good to kind of just watch that fight as a fan because obviously they're both your guys or yeah, is it kind of the, is it kind of the opposite they're both his guys you're going to see it's like seeing your kids fight isn't it yeah yeah you don't want yeah, you don't want one. either one of them to take an L. You care about them both. It's not. I don't want either either one get hurt. I don't want to see either one get. It's, it'll hurt either way. Yeah. Mm. It's not. It's not nice. I'm not looking forward to this at all. Um, then after that fight, I fly right back to Poland for fight week with Usyk, um, and then I was supposed to come back home and 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 take the misses on Labor Day weekend because it's her birthday and we go, we try to go away on her, on her birthday. Mm -hmm. And now that's not has to be changed. So now I'm flying from Poland right back to Manchester for beefy's fight on the second, which yep. is the missus's birthday. And, okay. uh, she'll be meeting. She, me there. I was about be, to say, would she like to come to the fight? Because I yeah, think she'll it's... come to, well, she'll come to the fight to meet me there. And she likes going to the fights and, uh, she likes, she, she likes the people that she likes the beefy crew and the Smith crew yeah. and what. So um, uh, she'll come to the fight, and then we'll go to a nice vacation somewhere to TBD. TBD. So we'll figure out where it'll be, and we'll leave from Manchester. Yeah. Take her to Venice. There's no, there's nowhere better. Go there. Um, that Poland Usyk Dubois card. Now, it's from a fan's perspective. Obviously, it's just hilarious. Like Dubois. Dubois, what are we doing? Like, who's like, other than the size, what is it? It's, it's not even a fight. It's a joke. Well, that's not what Frank says. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> can, we, can we listen to Frank? Well, apparently we have to. He seems to get, yeah. they let him. They let him talk. So I don't know. <laughs> listen, me, uh, and I'm, and I'm certain, Usyk is not foolish enough to be taking no, of this not. Yeah. lightly. Uh, and I know that Dubois is going to train, you know, for an opportunity here that might not come again. Uh, come and he's again. a big guy, and you've got to be careful. So, uh, um, and I, I mean, you wouldn't want a better guy going into a fight as such a heavy favorite than a guy like Usyk because he diminishes the chances of an upset by treating everybody with respect and yeah. working hard and living up to his craft. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's nice going in as a heavy favorite, and uh, I hope we get the job done like we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 it didn't click to me when the fight was made that Dubois was the guy that fought Kevin Lorena. Yep, and was technically he... gone. Like the fight was over. Really, dude. that's the same guy. I yeah, dude, I that was that was that. one of the ones. That was one of the ones where you know that maybe someone. I can't say it actually because of him. Um, never mind. 
Moving on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe when, maybe when we uh, hit unrecalled, I'll, I'll carry on that one. Um, with the boxer card, the, that that second, the beefy at Eubank two card is huge now. Have you seen the lineup streets? Yeah, I so, saw. Um, Alan... After, 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 and after, it's a big card. British boxing at the moment. I mean, we've had a bit of a break, and now it seems like there's shows every week. Like every fighter I'm working with is out in the next two, three weeks. Like there's card after card at the moment. They're all stacked. I have a problem with uh, with the fact that you have you have such little consideration for the fighters that you make a show on September second, which means that you have to train, you have to set up camp throughout the summer where. You're most of the, you know, these people have kids who go to school, yep. you know, your kids are home and you could give a flying rat's ass that they have to train and go away and prepare, you know, instead of going on holiday after having been on the road the whole time, you know, for out, throughout the year that you have to, again, go through your summer of doing this to put a show on, on September 2nd, right at the end of summer. Like really, there's no other dates in the year you can do it. I don't get it. But it is a good card. I don't even know who's on it. So uh, my concern is beefy. beefy and, and only beefy. And yeah. you're going to be opposite corners to Roy again. How was that? Was that a bit I weird? So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, Listen, I think, you know, I have the utmost respect for, for Roy. And uh, mm -hmm. I know he has the same for me. So we have no trash talking between us. That's, that's kept to the pool table, isn't it? Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Wait, so twenty years of rival. How do you feel? Do you I congratulations? Mean, that is, that's big. It's, it's such an achievement. Like, I remember bad. when rival like started, and I remember like fifteen years rival. Yeah, I used to describe rival right early doors of rival. I used to describe rival because it was like in the fast and furious stage because everyone was only caring about Grant winning and like Reyes, and then you had like these neon orange cool ones, and it was kind of like. It was kind of like the tuna car equivalent of gloves. They were excellent, but they just looked so like, what is this? A disruptor. And like over the years, it's, I mean, we've got the, we've got the body shield in the bathroom for when they come in person and then they get to punch the producer in the belly in the body yeah. shield. And we've yet to I have one. It out. He's tested it no, out. I, it's, it's I, like I, got, wearing, I got punched. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like wearing a bulletproof vest. It's unbelievable. That thing. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, bad. No, it's really not. Like, the best gear in the game. You know, you. It, what's interesting is try and see how many brands were around, major brands were around mm -hmm. when I started this 20 years ago, and how many brands are around now. Yep. And it's like everybody said, hey, who's this rival? We can do this. Let's copy them. You know, mm -hmm. and everybody just started, you know, everyone became a brand. Everybody figured they could manufacture equipment you know and everyone wants to want it to manufacture and the number of brands that have emerged you know is some took that a little too literally with the let's yeah. copy rival you think would, yeah okay, again, we're not allowed to talk about that and, until russ says we're allowed to talk about that but yes that definitely hey, it's happened. purely observation purely observation even down to like for the body shield for example there are pretenders to that body shield now that are big domestic like I'm not going to name the name, but it, you look at it and you just go, oh, I can see where you got the idea from that. Exactly. Yeah. It's, but, but this is but, why you've lasted 20 years, because it is innovation. It, was, it wasn't even trying to necessarily be innovation. It was just trying to be in our own lane, mm -hmm. do our thing, not copy what was already out there and just stick a label on something else. We wanted to do us that's it just stay in our mind in our own business did our thing went after our fighters had people wearing our gloves and now i think the pattern has become with all brands that they just take the best of what they can find on the market ship it off to a manufacturer and says copy this and put our label on it and you know they've taken my stuff they've taken grant stuff they've taken winning stuff they've taken pleto reyes's stuff they take everything that they want they appropriate it and take it and make it for themselves. Whereas we went through the the growth period and the struggle and the, the the heartache of building from scratch, you know, everything we made. 
Mm. And I guess there's a certain pride to be taken in that, but, you know, companies... Also, have come for sure, it, there's so many of the rival things that it's almost like you don't know you need it till you have it. And it's mm. like simple things like the way the lace goes and things that you're like, shit, yeah, you can tell that that comes from someone who understands it. Like in the fine yeah. details. Yeah, and it's just like some things you're like, I wish this existed. And then when, you, yeah, there it is. But some things you don't even know you want it till you have it. You're like, this is the difference. This is the thing. That's and that's why, what that's they can't why, recreate. No, the, you know, that's the, they, they, they try though. They give it their yeah, best well, shot yeah. at stealing it, you know, and um, some of the things are not easy, are not uh, difficult to to put on your pro, your own glove, you know, you take it the way your your strap is made. Little mm -hmm. subtlety is easy to do, and suddenly you have the same. Adidas has copied us, you yeah. know. I mean, like it's it's they're a multi gazillion dollar brand. If you want my company, come buy it from me. Yeah, exactly. We can buy. talk, but I guess it's cheaper for them to steal it. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it, that's been tough, but we've been here. And when I started the the business, you know, we had a philosophy that we wanted to live by and we still live by it today and i'm proud to say you know that while other companies are are businessmen trying to infiltrate the boxing world we're boxing people infiltrating the business world so yeah. uh and we're going to stick by that i love that have we got anything pretty strong coming out next is there anything that we should be looking out for on the rival website um we always like to have things coming out. Mm. Luke was just sat in here. You know, we could have talked to him. Uh, Luke Vincent. Yeah. But he, he just walked out. So, uh, you know, but we do He's have selfish. things coming in the pipeline. We have a new headgear coming out that we're really excited about. That okay. might, might say, wow. People are going to say, oh, huh, what, what's that? And then say, oh, that's why they did it. Same kind of nice. thing like we did with, you remember our little bag mitts, the, the RB5 yeah. little bag yeah. mitts. I love them. Well, when we first brought those out, everybody said, wow, well, what's that? Yeah, that's, not, that's no good. Now we can't keep them in stock. You know, that's yep. I, mean, I think that's going to happen with this headgear. People are going to look at it and say, yeah, oh, that's not good. I want that. And then they're going to try it and they're going to see someone wear it and say, oh, wow, there's a way, there's a reason this was designed this way. And uh, yeah, we think it's going to be big. So yeah, we got a few new things coming out. I want to say something as well. Like, first of all, thank you for supporting the fighters that you guys do support it. it I don't, I, I mean, I think you do know, but I don't think that many people know how much it means to some of these fighters. Like the, the difference between having a little bit of a custom glove on a TV fight and having the ability to rival, to produce it, it, it gives them like another 10%. Like oh. guys like Dan, Dan is, Team rival forever. Dan Aziz, I don't think we'll even look at another brand. Like he is with you forever. We love you know? Dan. Everyone <laughs> loves Dan. Everyone loves Dan. But then, like you know, Arta, he's never going to go anywhere else. Usyk's never going to go anywhere else. The only reason Loma's not in rival gear is because they probably paid him a fortune. And at some yeah. point, you just got to go. I understand. Yeah, yeah. That's what we did. We said, look, I understand. Take it. You know, what can you do? Yeah. But when 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 that contract is over, and when the career is is done, I'll tell you the truth and expose yeah. it all, and you'll be what really? Yeah, it won't, I don't think it will surprise because it you, you know it is what it is. Yeah, it's a business, Russ. On that note, unless there's anything you want to drop and and share some piping hot tea with the boys, um. I think you know what i've got i'm i'm on a countdown of my last few hours here at work before i leave for six weeks so i think i'm gonna have to see everybody before i go and if we want to do any of this from poland you know on the eve of the usik Ooh. fight or do something fact. Fact. you let me know and i'll probably have more time to talk then and uh we'll catch up on other juicy topics i love that russ um and yes if we can make it to manchester whatever that land is yeah <laughs> that's a good yeah. card he's bad huh he's, it's he's a few bad. hours in the train bro <laughs> are you kidding it's that's, that's one thing you got the the, the luxury of you have it's easy it's hard to get around london like if i was at one end of london and you guys oh, were at the other and said sorry we cannot mm -hmm. see you i would understand that 
I was getting it. That's not how it works. I'll come to you. Like, I tried to get you in here for an in-person. It was a 35-minute Uber. You were like, no. <laughs> no <laughs> you're giving me shit party. about a three-hour train drive. No, no, it wasn't a 35-minute Uber. No. 35-minute Uber. Wembley no. to here, 35 minutes. Done. Boom. Looked it up. So why anyway. didn't I come? You, you were busy. It was very busy. It was fight week. And I understand. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was fight week. Yeah. <laughs> Russ, a pleasure, mate. As always, you but know. We did go eat. We did go eat. We did? We did? Well, no there problem. Maybe mate, that's a secret. We, we, we love you. You know we love you. And the fact that you. Ian Ian came back on the private jet, especially for this. <laughs> that's, that's, that's you. That's you. It's huge. And all the nice girls behind as well. <laughs> Here we are. So good to thank see you, you again. so much, mate. Yeah, thank what you. Guess, man. Guys, it was thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me. Ian, welcome back. I hope uh, everything works out with you with the strike. And uh, Thank you, sir. You and uh, we'll see you guys in Manchester. Hell see yeah. In Manchester, Great.